This video is going to show two different methods of throwing a two-piece goblet kind of shape, like a chalice or a goblet uh, type of shape. Uh, both of them have a hollow stem. So if I pick this up, you can see it has a hollow stem and then the cup has a bottom there. It is not a continuous um, hollow space going from the cup into the stem, uh, primarily because that's not very practical for use and cleaning. So the two different methods that I show, um, the one that's bisque fired here on the left uh, and the two that are in the back, that shows a method where I throw the cup forms and I throw the stem forms. I allow them both to get to the leather hard state, then I attach them. The other one, which is over here, and the one that's upside down, as you can see, the foot of this is very moist and it's shiny right now. What I did on those is I threw the cup, allowed the cup itself to get leather hard, then I turned it upside down on my wheel, slipped and scored a ball of clay, centered it, and then threw it on the leather hard cup. So this one, as you can see, I can't set it on the bottom yet because that, of course, is still rather um, plastic. I often have students that um, want to learn how to throw a goblet. Um, and in this video, I'm going to show two different approaches on throwing goblets. Uh, the You will notice that the cup part is a single piece and then the stem is another piece. Now the difference in which I threw these is one of the cups, let's see, this one was thrown, allowed to get leather hard, and then when it was leather hard, I turned it upside down, centered a ball on it, and then threw the stem of the goblet directly on the leather hard piece. This one, the go goblet, um, the cup part and the stem part were thrown separately and then attached. I'm going to show both of those in this video for my students and I'm probably just going to voice over this so it can go a little faster. This, uh, this fabric type stuff that I'm putting down here, this is called a bat mate. Um, I have this in other videos, but it is made by the uh, it's either called Ziem or Sim Company. I don't know how you pronounce it, X-I-E-M. But the bat mate is designed when you wet it to set the bat on top and to prevent the bat from kind of shimmying around on the wheel. It's um, almost like a fake chamois type thing, but it's really cool. So you can find links to say the bat mate, the bat, the different tools that I'm gonna use located in either my Amazon influencer or storefront or in my Google Doc, which is located on the uh, in the video description. And the Google Doc has links to Amazon products that I like, recommend, use, that sort of thing. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is center. I'm going to make the cup part first. This is from one pound of clay. So I'm leaving about three eighths of an inch at the base. I recommend for a goblet to try to throw it thin so it decreases the weight. All right, top is thrown. I'm gonna trim away some excess. I wanna think about the eventual width as being where the um, stem is going to go. Now, with dry fingers, I pick it up and I'm gonna set it on my wear board so I can take it off the bat. And that's the first one. I'll go ahead and throw the second one because the throwing of the second one is pretty much the same. Students, you want to watch the thickness of your wall so it doesn't get really fat at the bottom. You want your wall to be rather even 
So if you were to do a cross section of it, it should look the same thickness top to bottom. And just like a cup, you don't want to make that edge too thick. You, it should be less than a quarter of an inch thick and you don't want to make it sharp. A sharp edge is never a good thing. Now, I'm not really concerned about making these to match since these are just a demo, but if you were making if you were making your pieces to match, you would want to match the outer lip. You would want to try to match the width. Now, for something like that, you can use calipers. Calipers are a very handy thing. Uh, if you're trying to be consistent, you can use something like this to measure the width so you know when you do the next one, it should be that wide. Um, you can use it for any part. These are double-ended calipers where you can measure the interior or something, you can measure the exterior or something. Um, and it's really designed for a lid. So if you're, you have a pot with a gallery, you can measure that and then you know that the lid has to fit in it. Um, I show those in another video. And I'm just gonna rib a little bit here. Make sure that it's nice and smooth. We do a little play at the base. And then again, I'm gonna use one of these towels. In my classroom, I keep microfiber towels at the wheels. Each towel has one wheel, so the students can keep their hands wiped as they need to pick things up or dry things off and then they uh, rinse rather nicely. So I, I like those a lot. I use them a lot in my classroom for cleaning counters and things like that too. Okay, so again, spread my fingers out as I pick it up. There we go. Okay, now I'm ready to do the stem of just one. The other one, I'm not going to worry about throwing the stem until it's leather hard. So for the stem, I want to keep the base of the stem about the same thickness as the base of the cup. They could both be trimmed a little bit later, but I am going to make it, if we look at this one, I am going to make it so it was thrown thrown like this right so the the stem was maybe a little bit wider right down here got skinnier and then came back out so I throw these upside down I'm gonna go right down to the center because I don't have to keep any clay down there and it's very similar to a teapot spout at the beginning but then I just flare it out now my finger on the inside has pushed uh, toward the wall, so it's actually angling out on the inside. It's not really thick down there. And then it angles in. I'll reach down there as far as I can go. And you want to think about how tall you want your stem, how narrow do you want it. They're great for water goblets. Now I'm gonna throw two of these because inevitably, just like a lid, a handle, or a spout, one is gonna look better than the other. So I flare this out. So this part up here, this is a part where it will be sitting someday. rib off some of that and um, every once in a while I have kids who don't quite understand and they want to make a goblet that is all one continuous piece I would never recommend that because imagine how difficult it would be to clean the interior of it 
if you have a, some sort of a sticky liquid, a sugary liquid that's in there, and you pick it up, okay. So now I'm gonna set this. Now because I have water right there, students, I recommend that you get that water off. You could use your orange towel if you want. And students, remember, always come back with a ball that has been uh, wedged. Don't bring back lumps and attempt to center a, a lump that has not been wedged. The pugged clay is great, but I usually give it a couple of twists before I use it. If you've thrown minis, like miniature pots, this has some similarities to throwing minis. Because you're centering such a small piece of clay, it's actually a little bit challenging to center something so small and narrow. Because you use uh, more or less your fingers rather than your whole hand to do it. Okay, now I'm going to shape it. And I would say that the top of my cup is actually thinner than the base to add a little, a little more lightness to it. And here I'm just going to again go in just to collar in a little bit more. I want to think about the diameter of this, uh, the stem as being, it's probably just a little bit smaller than the diameter of the cup. You don't want your stem to be really narrow. That is a very common mistake my students make sometimes. So if you see this one, you can see the diameter is a little bit less. This one might be even a little bit uh, less than that other one. All right, so I have two cups thrown, two stems, but I'm only using one of these. I'm gonna use the best looking one when I'm ready. And for this, I'm, I'm actually gonna trim away a little bit extra right there. And then I'm gonna steady that again with my hand. There we go. All right, that's the first stage. Now I'm gonna let this get leather hard and I'll come back in a little while when they're both leather hard to show you how to complete these. All right, my pieces are now at the leather hard state and I can think about connecting them. Um, I'm gonna see which one I like better. I think I'm gonna do this one and then I'll do the other kind of stem on this one. So now this, okay, these, this was the two-piece part. I'm going to use my Giffen Grip to hold this in place. I have loads of videos using a Giffen Grip that show how to do that, so if you have never used a Giffen Grip, I, I love them. I use it a lot as a production potter. Um, it's a nice, handy little tool that makes quick work of a lot of stuff. And certainly, if I wanted to uh, trim this down, I, I would. I'm just going to use it the length as is. Okay, and remember that the parts that were against the bat are the parts that are going to go together with this. Okay, now I'm going to, so I've scored both surfaces. I'm adding a little bit of water, which when it mixes up with the clay, it actually is slip. Now I'm going to just very firmly attach that down. Okay. I want to get it in the center. Oops. All right. And now that I have that firmly attached, I could trim away some of the extra. 
Now, if you wanted to do something that was more of a, a decorative, you know, like a, a bold connection, you certainly could. Uh, I'm just going to task this one to just be a smooth transition. There's a fair amount of thickness at the very top. So I'm just smoothing that out just a little bit more. And then I'm going to take a rib. smooth that out. So this is the first of the two ways to make a goblet. Okay, so that is thrown in two separate parts and attached and you can see that the stem is hollow but it goes up and it meets the bottom. So it certainly makes it light. You never want to have a solid stem. Anytime you have more surface area, like on the inside and outside, you have two layers of surface area. It's stronger than something that would be solid. Plus, you don't, don't want it to be so thick that it would feel heavy or blow up. Okay, next I'm going to use the other one. And this one is one where I'm going to show how we can actually throw a little foot ring on it a foot ring or a stem, I should say. But first I'm going to trim away just a little bit of this to make it a little bit thinner. Now obviously if I were doing something where I was trying to um, make a matching set, I would have been measuring these when I first did it, but I am not worried about that. I'm just making little one-off pieces here. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and score a ball of clay. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than the ball that I currently have. All right, so it's going to be about that. And I'm going to score this. It's nice to have the clay about the same moisture. This one, I admit, this is a little bit more plastic than I probably should be using, but it's what I had handy, so that's what I grabbed. All right, so I've scored both. I've put slip on one. Now, for connecting this, I'm going to very firmly anchor this down without any water. So right now, I am just trying to firmly attach this. I feel like I have a little bit of a funky um, kind of wobble right here. I think it must be when I picked it up off of the uh, bat with my fingers, I probably left a slight indent. So this would be a great one where maybe I should texture it. Okay. Now this is going to be somewhat similar like throwing a mini. So I'm just going to center the ball of clay basically with my fingertips. I'm trying not to use so much water that it's dripping down the sides. So I'm really just localizing the water right on the top with my sponge. I'm going to push my finger in until I reach the bottom of the cup. Now, I could use perhaps um, longer extensions. Um, I'm just gonna try to be careful not to knock this sideways too much. So I'm going to make that angle in and then flare out. what that one looks like. Okay, so I've got a little lump right there. I'll get that off, but that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to just rib this to try to get off the irregular irregularity of clay that I might have stuck there.
go. Now this one, because that foot is wet, it, it's probably obvious, but I am going to be sitting this on the rim to get this to dry. Now, here's one that I did off camera, but I thought this would be kind of fun with a little short stem. Uh, this, this could be a big one, actually. I kind of like it with a big one. This is, this is a, a big old goblet. We can call that a water goblet. Because if that's a wine, that is like 16 ounces. All right. So first of all, I'm gonna, okay. So I knew that I had one extra thing that I probably wasn't gonna use. So just off camera for fun of it, I threw another uh, piece and this one, I'm just gonna attach on there. Again, same manner, I, I'm doing this one just for fun. In the case of that one, I left that pronounced uh, little uh, connection there. There we go.